This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So I'm about two and a half hours from our shop and we're over here to take a look and see what's going on with these condenser units. We've got two of them that appear to be low. Our sight glass there is about half full. So we know we have a leak on that one. We've got this one here. It wasn't looking very good earlier, but it's kind of halfway okay. And then this one here was full the last time we looked at it. Uh, installed by another company, we couldn't get the cases quick enough. So it goes through the wall there, goes through the other side, and it's just two cases on the one, and the other one has three. This kind of lays out the layout here. We have 15 cases over here for the ice cream. Then we have two here, and then you have three over here. This one here is freezing up, so we've got problems with defrost. Coils and stuff look fine. Good to go on that. I was looking at our defrost clocks here, and what I noticed is they didn't have defrost termination. That was when I went inside and noticed that the cases are uh, terminated and stuff by the electronic control that's on the inside. Uh, so we got that possibly to look at. There's some sensors that look like they're unplugged. So I'm not really sure what all I'm getting into. Never been here before. I just know that this guy's been a pretty good customer of ours, and that's the reason why we drove. Uh, so far, come take care of him. And we are over in Indiana now. So we drove a, like I said, two and a half hours. So not a big deal, but for the most part, everything looks fairly clean. So the first thing I'm gonna do is see if I can find the leak, because that's probably one of the worst things we gotta deal with here, is find out where the leak's at, and uh, then we'll start mixing, messing with defrost after that. So we went ahead and went through and checked the air bands for all these. And so these are the three and two. So a total of five cases here. One, two, three, four, and five. Up here is how they're doing their defrost stuff. So you've got all your lines are luckily up here on top, which we're gonna go through and check all those, but I have a funny feeling since we're not picking up much, I don't know. You can see right there is where it came through the wall. You can see they came in there and teed it. Everything looks pretty good from what I'm seeing. I mean, it looks like they did a fairly good job. Um, but that right there is how the defrost and stuff is controlled. That usually kills things. Uh, you've got some contactor boxes right here. But I noticed some of the probes look like they might be unhooked. So like I said, I've only had like one run in with this type of device and I had problems with it. And we got it on the control system of Emerson and then shit canned it. So it's kind of a, I don't know, for whatever reason, I don't think it's that great. Um, over here's the ice cream, these are new. And you know, all these are working fine, of course, which you would think ice cream would be more likely to have more problems, but does not appear to be. To me, it's just one extra thing to, to go wrong. Okay, so we got one digital controller there. So that's kind of how they're doing the thermostat. There's a thermostat down there, and I think one right here. So yeah, fun, fun. I didn't catch anything on the uh, inside yet. This one finally shut off, so let's go ahead. And uh, yeah, you can see it's tracking time, so we know it's working. Let's go ahead and turn this thing off so I can get in here without worry of getting my hands taken off. Looks like they snapped the uh, yeah, there's some things on there. There, it's off now. Let's go in here, and now that we've got it pumped down, let's see if we can pick up any leaks. I know, usually I got plenty of leaks right here on this fitting right here, usually. It's never usually tight, but you can see we've got some oil here and there. Up there in that corner, you can see it's sure looks like it would probably be some oil. Same thing up here, hard to say. Okay, so scan it around, of course, you know, a little bit around the straighter cores, but it's so bum, nothing really came out. Kick the power back on, first thing I noticed, it kicked on immediately. We're looking at our suction here. You can't pull down much further. I mean, we're pulling half inch liquid lines all in there. This one is going to two of them. I'm wondering how much of it is actually, I mean, that's usually one of the things most people skip is setting the pressure switches correctly. 
which I was looking at it, and they still have the little chart in there. Some people put it back on. I do too sometimes. But you can see where they've got it at. It's about almost 30 possibly, but it's hard to tell. I usually like to kick on about 23-ish PSI for 404, which, you know, this thing is just struggling to get down that last bit, probably because we're so full of liquid and we don't have any room for it. I can't tell if that's energized, so let's go grab my amp probe. It's raining on and off a little bit, which is kind of cool that I was able to kind of come right underneath this awning. Makes it kind of easier to not get wet, because I'll melt. So coming in, we have amp draw. So if this ener is energized, which is, appears to be, because coil's got a magnetic field on it, then that looks, where is that one coming in at? Comes in through right there. So one of them comes up. Is it even wired right? It's tied on there with a common. Man, they just kind of threw stuff together wherever, didn't they? So one, one leg is to that. What the heck? One leg goes to that and the other leg goes to in. So you've got your common there on in going to one side of the coil. The other one is on the other. So you dang well better make sure that's on the right spot. Four going inside on this yellow wire. This one's going on the other yellow wire. I gotta check the wiring to find out what's going on. But usually I like to see that solenoid wired in series. So they're coming off a common wire, which would be your in. The other one's coming off one side of the contactor. It's not usually how we wire it. I'm not visualizing something here correctly. I know I'm not. It doesn't seem right. I mean, we're running a five pound suction there. Our, our, well, I know our coil in the one is kind of froze up, but my goodness. Negative 22, it just seems awfully low. Okay, let's get on the right refrigerant here too. I didn't think about that. Let's get on 448. Being an idiot here. So let's get on 448. Running right around about 5 PSI on that one, too. Yeah. So, must be what 448 runs at. I've only got one store that runs 448. Kind of curious about the ice cream, because this one here is running the lowest, of, uh, the coldest of all of them. It's around about negative 17. So now we're on the ice cream. One case that's not having a crap ton of problems is actually running more along the lines of about 9 PSI. You know what, that's half inch. That looks like 5 8 actually, the more I look at it. 5 8 holy crap. I'm surprised this receiver's big enough to even hold all that. Let's go ahead and start focusing on these over here. Let's see if some of these caps are tight on this. tighten stuff up. I'll get that other one when the fans aren't running. I got on the one. It's a little tighter than I care for. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this one here first because this is the first two cases. Let's go ahead and put in defrost. Let's see what those fans do. We're going to compare it, see what the other ones are doing. I think it's really hard to charge this unit if it's uh, froze up. So I don't even really want to go that route just yet. So let's go ahead and kick her into a defrost. We know that this clock is tracking. And wow, that was instantaneous. Uh, yeah, that's not normal. So that's not set up right. Let's go over here and look at this part. I think we may have just found our issue. Uh, we, s no. I'm sorry, I don't trust you right now. I, I, I don't want to get familiarized with this today. All right, let's try this. I know what this meter does and how it reacts, and it's not reacting. So the solenoid is dead. Let's see how this solenoid is. This solenoid does show 18, 19, you know, it's just showing us that there's some magnetic fields there. Let's go over here to our actual outgoing. Go to three. Really no amperage on that. If you look at four, both legs at four there for shizzles. 
So yeah, no amperage at all being ran through this. It's all done separately on the inside. I'm real leery about leaving my gauges out here. Especially when you've got a whole big parking lot of people. And they all can walk up to it. So they yank them off. Okay, so the fans are off. So they go dead. It should be this next case here too. It should be dead. And it's dead. Okay, good. This one down here should be running. And it's running. Okay, good. So these two cases here. Let's go up here and look at the amp draw. We are pulling amp draw. 9, 10 amps here on that one. We are pulling 9.9 .9 amps on that one there too. Uh, both of them are basically defrosting. Let's see what's going on here with this thing. It says negative 9. This has no way of terminating. That I can see. Let's look at that brochure. So we do have electric. It says right here, these controls may include a click on stat, which usually is number two here, sensor probe, which we have a sensor probe coming up here. On the orange, defrost termination probe. Right there it is. That's what's hooked up. Hopefully it's on the right one. I don't know what this thing's set up at to turn off at. You know, it's like, okay, is any of this other crap not wired right or wrong? Who knows? You can see this right here. It looks like it goes across to there. So that right there must be the defrost heater uh, terminals right there. Let's go over to that. All right, so it's cruising right up there. I think everything's wired right. I just kind of wonder, is it an issue with super heat not being set right? Defrost not set right? I mean, it's just... I hate walking in on other people's stuff. You don't know if they're good. Hacks, you don't know. I mean, everything I see here looks good. Okay, this is the other one down here. It's still at 15. The termination looks like it's set for 50. So here's those two power wires for the defrost, which, there's your 9.9. .9. Why does it have another sensor there and it's not seeming like it's getting warmer like the other one is? See how it's reading negative 14? Makes you really wonder if there's something wrong here. So you can see there the yellow wires go back outside. That should be controlling your solenoid. I'm going out there, so they're gonna pick one piece of power off the other, and I think they've got something wired wrong here. I'm gonna double check it. Okay, we're at 49 there. We're getting ready to hit. But yet this other one, not hitting. <laughs> It's still negative two. We got a problem. So yeah, that sensor's not right or it's frozen to a block of ice and it's just not transferring. But you've got two denser, two different sensors here. One of them got changed. Why? I, I hate coming out. You don't know. Can you see this here? At some point, somebody blew something up and you can see some replaced modules down there in the box. This makes everything so nice and easy. But, uh, you can see we've got us a defrost heater there. It's not even warm. Yeah, this sucks because we got all this crap in the way and you're trying to diagnose it with all this stuff. I do not see any heater elements down there at all glowing. Well, there might, yeah, that's liquid line right there. So we're not getting that. I noticed that we're not getting any door heaters defined. I'm not, I mean, you see a little bit of heat there on that. So obviously, yeah, I can feel heat up here on the top. I mean, you definitely got some heater elements, but I think there's some other things that probably are unhooked and that's what I'm afraid of. There's some hackery going on that somebody hooked something up wrong. They're not done on purpose, but it still it happened. I think that's why we got issues here. So obviously we have major issues here. You can see maybe we might have a little spot there where the heater's working, but that's about it. Everything else is not doing squat. Yeah. There's your orange heater. Sensor there that's buried in ice. That's why it's not doing nothing. This whole panel, this whole freaking case needs yanked, and this is all gotta be washed out. Uh, I, I need to double check, find out where's my heaters. Where, is there no heaters down here in bottom? I'm not familiar with the case, so without being able to see it, you can see right there that that heater's not even working, so it's probably not hooked up, is what I'm assuming. 
Here's the worst dang thing about grocery. When it's all frozen, what the hell? Hell, right there, you can see it, what's going on. It's busted off. It turns your heater element. It's broke. It's not working because it's broke. Their guys didn't notice that. I mean, look at that. You can see it blew apart. For the love of Pete, really? So this is gonna be a waste of time. It's just gonna freeze up again. You can see how all that back here is going to be had. So all that's going to be melted out. Yeah, we've got problems. It's going to take a while to do this. We're about running out of hot water already. We finally got her. Back in here is the part that you really got to get good. There's that little pocket ice. And you can see it's at an angle. This here kind of sucks. I don't think this is gonna be very easy to remove, but we do got them clipped off on the ends and we put wire nuts on them. We, uh, yeah, right here, I got it clipped off there. So I gotta undo this screw here and see if we can yank this thing out. I tried several different ways to get that out, but also done away, I just cut it. So that's, that's your freaking, Heater element. I don't know how in the world that's supposed to heat it up and actually melt it, but must do it. <laughs> now, what I'm wondering is, is how is this 10 amps when that was 10 amps? And so is that one over there screwed up too? Because when you look at this, I see single phase 208, 17 amps. I don't know. Uh, you got three heater elements here and you got three different colors. See that black, blue, and red? That kind of comes over here, matches up over here, I'm pretty sure. So this comes into here and it should hook into a blue. I'm gonna snip this off. Like I said, there's my wire nut. This is so hodgepodgey. And if you look here, there is a snap disc somewhere in here. And what's funny is I think that other heater element right there wasn't getting hot either because it was frozen. Um, which if you got three heater, three different colors, is this set up for three phase and they didn't wire it right? I don't know, we have to check up the top, see if it's not wired right. Maybe, maybe half your problem. Don't know, it's speculation right now. So here's red coming to the front, black. What sucks is, is chances are it probably terminates as soon as I turn it on. I'd like checking after all the... I don't know, I have a bad feeling. It's probably got other issues. We're gonna catch it all because now everything's warm. But we had to do that to be able to see what the heck's going on in here. Got most of this stuff here all back together, which is always great. Cause every one of those pieces are gonna be in there. Now we can put these things in, which surprisingly, we actually made them the width of the door so it actually fits. Imagine that, right? We're gonna have to do all this again when we come back, depending on how long it goes to get the part. Because a lot of these guys are taking forever to get stuff. We got some Husband stuff ordered. And we've been waiting for several, several weeks for some fan motors. Let's see where we're at. I kicked that back on. Glass. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna freeze it down a little bit and then we're gonna check the amp draw again. Uh, what I might do is throw the ice cream into a short defrost just to go see what kind of amp draw I'm getting on those. Looks like this may have just, oh, <laughs> it was getting ready to go into a defrost anyway. So there you go, great. That works out great. That's the ice cream. No amperage. So let me pull shit on that one. Better it came out of defrost and it's not in it. That's nice. Okay, just kicked it in defrost again. It's not the right, it's not labeled right, go figure. And it's not shutting off properly either. Okay, or 9.5 on that one, but this one here, we got almost 19. So either they doubled up another case, but since they didn't label nothing, there's no way to really know for certain what exactly I'm checking. Because normally you take your marker and you would mark the backside of the panel, and then you would be able to tell which one goes to which. But since they were never gonna come back, it don't really matter. Well, as you can see, it should have been these, but really it's that one. So 
this was correct. So maybe we can put this one. This must be, I'm assuming this must be the ice cream. So let's go ahead and put it in it and see what we get. But like I said, listen to this. No pump down at all. Boom. No pump down. What's the point of even having solenoid? So yeah, it's not wired right. There ain't no way. Did it go dead on that now? Yep. Okay, so this is the ice cream. <laughs> Took me two and a half hours to get here, a little more. Uh, we, we arrived that several times. 9.7. 9.9. And see if this one's higher. 9.9. So the, the, what I think we got going on here is the bigger elements are all 230 volts. I think that one I wanted to know if it worked or not is 120 volts. So um, it would have been great if we had a a simple to read schematic instead of all this craziness. Okay, checking the defrost heater. We are right at 9.9, .9, which is what we had at the top, but we don't have that other one hooked up and it looks like it's equal in schematic. Here is our drain heater. We did not have anything on that when we were uh, in regular freeze mode and now we're in defrost and nothing still. So I gotta check the top, see if it's wired. All right, we're gonna kick it back out because it's, I wish they would just made this a little simpler. The three and four, the one and two is easy to find. Some of this other crap, it's like, it just kind of reminds me of a Linux, a Linux schematic. Okay, five doors, that's what we got. We have an ORZ and the fan should be about 1.6. Tank heater, I'm assuming, they mean, I don't know what they mean by that. But you have defrost heaters here, it should be 17.5 at 208 or 20 amps at 240, which we're probably closer to 240 area. So yeah, you're missing one of them. They're in parallel, they're the same length. So they should be 10 amps a piece. So do we have multiples down? This is what sucks, okay? I'm two and a half hours from home and we are at 350. We're kind of running into time crunch here and I need enough freaking defrost heaters to make this thing run. And I gotta rip all that potential, um, food out to be able to get into the heaters and it's just don't have enough time. I mean, you, you got five hours of just driving back and forth and it's just kind of a flipping mess. So here's your defrost for the day and things like that, but good grief, this is a treat. Okay, I may have just finally found a half a decent one here in the book. Here they're actually telling me what my voltages are. So we got the fans at 120 volts and you can see they're going up there. One leg is getting p powered to the motors. The other one's kind of looping in and out of stuff and gonna get broke as it goes into defrost. The, um, here you can see it's 230 volt, 208 volt for the defrost heaters. They come up, one goes, uh, one leg goes to both sides there and the other one, uh, they come back over here and then they go through a defrost limit relay, which is normally closed, which then brings it down to the other leg. So that's that relay there. So they're basically shutting down the heater element, but then it just sets there. So if it trips, it just sets there. Now there's a termination, which is dry contact, and that's somewhere in here on a relay. This is a dry contact right here. So right there it is. And that, those two wires there would go out and would loop to your X terminal on your clock and you could pick that off of your uh, three. And your supplemental drain heater is 120 volts because you can see that here coming up through that relay, drain heater relay. Um, that gets powered, uh, normally it's powered open. See how it's normally closed? We're having a good time now. So 230 volt coil comes over, two black wires come through. So what we did, we're gonna clean this up. One side of that coil is gonna get the thermostat. The other one's gonna get it off at number four. And then we're gonna hook this pressure switch up probably the way it used to be, because this switch time clock doesn't even show up in here. So they must not have, they must have added this because all this wire is rinky dink and it must have been their guys that wired it up. The thermostat is gonna control the solenoid only, which is the way it should have been. You can tell it's not wired right. That's what we're doing. Okay, so we've got that there coming down to here. Let's go ahead and turn this thing up till it clicks. Listen to that. Hear it? There we go, turned it up. This thing's never been shutting off. We ended up uh, adjusting it. And right now we've already adjusted for a cutout to be right around one or two because it's coming on at 16 pounds. Good chance that it might actually short cycle on a hot day, which it may do it once or twice, unfortunately, when you're running that low because 448A 
at uh, 18 pounds, uh, I think it is, 16 or 18, is like negative 10 degrees. So, I mean, we could raise it a touch to, like, say, zero. Theoretically, we'd cut in at zero, but we got to look at it. What is it going to be on the cold days in the winter? one more time possibly but we can't go so far that we go into a negative so if we lose the refrigerant it's going to sit there and run into negative sucking crap into the system which ain't good on the compressor either this is also why it's not a good idea to put the solenoid out here because we're actually stopping it from coming all the way into the building so you're pumping every square inch of that refrigerant which that one's 5 eighths, and I think that one there almost looks like it's 5 eighths. But that's going all the way up, all those three cases. Whereas if we stopped it where we distributed, yeah, we're gonna kick on one time. And today's a cooler day. Supposedly 80 degrees, don't feel like it. And let's watch it go down one more time. But if that solenoid was on the inside, it would have stopped it because it had more room to uh, pile that liquid up. And then sometimes that compressor, because it's a scroll compressor like we got, which we can't run those into negative, will sometimes unload on themselves and do something very similar. All right, so we threw it into defrost, and of course, it's gonna break it there. I should have put the pressure switch in series one here, which one is one side of the power going down to there. So right now it is running. It does shut off about one PSI. So let's go ahead and put her in defrost make sure that it pumps down like it should because that's why that's how I caught it okay boom and it will cut down or shut down and we can check it real fast make it a little quicker should not have amp draw we do not have amp draw good so it should shut down normally what you would do is put an interlock switch in here and would not allow the next relay to kick in until this one does it now you do have an in switch on here but they're using that there for the uh, compressor crankcase heater. So if we wanted to, if we had enough conductors, we could actually run it on the inside. We could also run that X terminal. Once again, need to have enough conductors to be able to do that. There we go. So it did it. So let's kick her back out. I want to move that a little bit along the way. We'll let her do a defrost here. Maybe, I don't know, half the time is normal because I don't remember when it did it, its first thing. And then we'll be able to watch to verify. I think I took it up about 18. Yeah, about 18, 19. The food in there, worst case scenario, hopefully the refrigerant comes through, gains temperature through the cases, and even though it's you know around the negative five, it should kick on even though we do get that cold around here. So we'll uh, see what happens. We'll have to deal with it. I'd rather have that than short cycle. We'll deal with that when it happens, if it happens. Okay, so now we're on the ice cream. They put a digital control in here on this one. Off. Negative 14 on at seven, which it's ice cream. I think it'd be nice if it was a little bit higher than that. This thing probably never shuts off. So we're gonna go ahead and crank this up. Okay, because it's not shutting off and check the wiring. So it's wired right. For whatever reason, it's still not shutting off. You know guys, I just got thinking about something. It's never telling me what the temperature is. You know why? You know what OP stands for? OP usually means sensor open. Well, guess what? See that right there? See where those sensors are at? See where the sensors are supposed to be at? The bottom two. Where are these at? These are at the top two. See how it is? They got it in the wrong one. So the guy put it in the wrong sensor spot. This, yeah, this never shut off except for defrost. It ran nonstop. I was just telling my customer because that was in the wrong spot. Never shut off. Look at that. Now it turns off. Look how it's reading what the actual temperature is in there now. Negative eight. So, yeah. And then also the guy only ran one sensor. So instead of putting all these in multiple sensors so they could uh, kind of average them all together to make sure it's all warm or cold, he only gets one sensor in there. That's all I see. I mean, it didn't even wire it up right. So go figure, right? 
So let's go out there and finish the rest of this. I did not write this crap on top here. Yeah, that is not me. Okay, we just corrected the outside stuff. Let's go in here off. Let's take it down. Let's see if we can hit that, hopefully. And do on negative five. There it goes. You hear a click. All right, so we got them all set up so they all shut off. To be proactive here, we're going to find out which ones are not pulling the full amperage that it should. And we're just gonna order the elements. And if I'm wrong, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna be, you know, whatever the elements cost versus the uh, trip coming back could be over several hundreds of dollars. So we're gonna get up here and check these contactors and see what amperage it is. It should be around 17 to 19 amps area, 20 amps. We'll mark it and then uh, go from there and come back. All right, so that one's nine. So we're gonna go ahead and write this down so we know which one's which. 9.9, 9 9.6. .9 and this one I think is higher. Nope, 9.8. So, there you go. So basically we'll get three of them here. So you get a total of three cases. So we know each one should be pulling about the same amperage. So you get three of them here, unfortunately, which would really suck, but that's what we might have. All right, so we got one that actually works. 19.4, four, yeah, 19.4. So I'm not completely crazy. That one there is 9.7. That sucks. Oh, yuck. 9.8. Let's put a blue marker in my mouth. That's great. And there we go. 9.4. 9.4. All right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, seven of them we need. So yeah, great. Well guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. It's uh, seven o'clock, so I'll be home about 9.30 area. Got it about as much as I can get done. Educated guess on the elements. There's no reason for it to be pulling uh, 10 amps. It should be 19 something like you've seen in the one. So one case out of all of them. So seven out of eight cases have a problem. They never shut off. They never pump down correctly. Uh, the uh, drain heaters were not wired up, or at least the one wasn't. I'm assuming the other ones are gonna be very similar to the same situation. And as uh, far as the refrigerant, I added a pound and a half to each of the two that were flashing a little bit, but now that the coils aren't frozen, it seems like it's working a lot better. Um, defrost and everything else seem to be okay as far as the time settings, but that's about it, guys. Uh, I'll come back, put on that thing, but we'll probably wrap this video up and just spit it out and uh, you guys can see what happened. Appreciate y'all taking the time to watch it, if you liked it. You know what to do. Until next time, see you on the next one. Later.